Ooh, what's that there in your belly button, huh? You got some gold in there, do ya? Welcome back to our slash dating hell, everyone. This is the continuation of Tinder Misadventures. If you missed the first video, that link in the description as usual. Part number two is named Belly Button Boy. Which video did we hear about this recently? And I was like, that can't be a thing. Yeah, it confirmed to be a thing. <laughs> Welcome back to user stupid internet fart. It seems like Red X enjoyed the last story that he narrated and people here seem to want more. Far be it from me to deny you that all too enticing hit of cringe. So we'll get after it again today. Before we do though, I'd like to invite you into my head. It might help explain my reaction or lack of one to the previous dating nightmare. I was young. I was raised by alcoholic parents, and I was taught that speaking up about anything only brings trouble. Jesus, that got dark <laughs> quick, fast, in a hurry. I'm sorry I had to go through that, OP. I definitely did enjoy the first story, but with this added information, maybe I'd look at things in a new light if I went back and read it again. OP continues, I don't need pity. I've been to therapy and moved past it, for the most part. <laughs> It's simply to shed some light on why I remain so passive throughout these events. Truth be told, this series of strange and awful dates slowly helped to bring me out of the shell that I had built for myself. So, it was all happening for a reason, I guess, but we aren't quite there yet. There is something to be said for going through tribulations and eventually finding your power. I, I do get that. So, Dean was the worst date with his seafood surprise, but he wasn't the first date that I subjected myself to from Tinder. No, that honor belongs to Ben, the belly button boy. Well, Ben definitely has some proclivities, doesn't he? <laughs> Cast lists are unnecessary, TLDR is at the end. Now let's get the cringe train rolling. Ben's profile wasn't very intricate. A single line about wanting something meaningful, which doesn't hold much water for me anymore, but I don't know, I was 18 and naive. Some might also say that I was fairly shallow. In one picture, Ben was drinking a natty ice. In another, he had on a backwards hat. Pardon me, whoa. <laughs> I was close to swiping left on yet another bro dude and carrying on. But then I got one look at Ben with his shirt off and I was hooked. This is a Chad fishing scenario, is it not? <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about, bro? Well, maybe it's best to not judge a book by its cover. I don't know. But it seems like you had him dialed in and then you went back on it. Because you're like, oh my god, he's got a six pack. <laughs> oh, six pack. Uh, sometimes we reap what we sow. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it might be a catfish, but for a body like that, ooh, I was more than willing to take my shot. Ben out here killing it on Tinder. What is this? <laughs> Suffice to say that Ben was a gorgeous human being. I should have been looking more than skin deep though because Ben had some deep dark secrets. Undercover belly button boy. <laughs> he did match with me though and I was super flattered. We had a meandering conversation. I learned that he loves his mom and is absolutely terrified of horror movies. Those things will come into play a bit later. He didn't seem to have much to say that was interesting or clever, but I let it all slide. Ben's abs were blinders, a three pack on each side. I gotta at least give you this much OP, you are keeping it real, you know? <laughs> I guess that's hindsight in play, but you're like, yeah, I mean, I was mostly in it for the six pack. <laughs> uh, and I guess, I guess that's okay if you're aware of it. We value authenticity around here. It's the people that are like, oh, I'll find some other <laughs> superficial reason to say I'm interested. That's the type of stuff I can't stand. Anyway, continuing on. Ben seemed to push for a meetup rather fast, which usually made me go ghost in the few Tinder conversations that I'd had before. But I thought to myself that now I was finally ready for an actual date with an internet stranger. <laughs> Uh, it's about as appealing as it sounds most of the time. <laughs> uh, maybe he was way more interesting in person. I mean, he was interesting, but not in the way that I'd hoped. <laughs> uh, if he can't do it in text, 
What makes you think he could do it in person? I guarantee Ben's got the personality of a rock. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, OP says the fact that his body was chiseled from granite turned flesh had nothing to do with my decision. Again, isn't it funny the lies that we tell ourselves? <laughs> I mean, it's all right, like. Uh, actually, yeah, sorta. So basically, you are only admitting this to yourself in hindsight. Okay, noted. Ben wanted me to come over to his place, and stupidly, I agreed to do so. We'd only been talking for about a week, and now I was going to deliver myself to his front door. <laughs> ben, big fuckboy energy. <laughs> uh, but OP don't care. Walk right into the wolf den and hope for the best. God, I swear, I would love to shake the living shit out of my past self, but I truly didn't know better at that time. Come on, at 18, you, you seen some stuff, you heard some stuff, right? <laughs> uh, maybe she's like ultra sheltered, but no, her parents are alcoholics, they probably didn't give a crap. I don't mean to dissect this so openly, but yeah, maybe the comments section could shed some light on it. OP tries to convince herself maybe we would actually watch some Netflix and chill. <laughs> uh, could he actually be looking for something meaningful? Oh man, it's like a train wreck in slow motion, isn't it? <laughs> uh, a dumpster fire I can't find my way out of, and I love it. Ben's place was in a lower middle class section of the LA outskirts. At the time, I thought it looked pretty busted, but compared to some of my later encounters, it wasn't the worst house. Sorta of nondescript and uninteresting, but well-maintained, much like Ben himself, I suppose. Yeah, people look like their dogs, why not look like their house? <laughs> uh, I scoped it out for a few minutes. Surfboards on the porch, a few potted plants, a bench seat out front. It seemed very normal. So I collected myself, headed up to the door, and knocked. I like that you scoped that out though. She did the same thing on her date with Dean. It's a good ritual to have, I'll say. Ben answered and yeah, he was all smiles. He lifted my arm above my head and I gave him a little twirl. After a wolf whistle, he commented that he'd like to see something that showed off a bit more of my midriff. I mean, already, even without the belly button thing, it's kind of red flaggy, <laughs> but she's into it, I guess. He gestured for me to show him my stomach and I did. I didn't mind. I put work into it. A strong body starts with a strong core. Again, OP being really real right there. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, got some abs too, check this out. Still a little bit creepy, but maybe this is just gym culture, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, Ben seemed satisfied. Maybe a little bit more than that in hindsight. His eyes devoured me, but he was a hunk, so <laughs> I didn't mind. <laughs> uh, really do be like this sometimes. His predatory nature would soon be revealed to me, but I had no idea what I was in for quite yet. Instead, I let him scoop me up into a hug before he invited me inside. This is the weirdest, lamest, most low effort first date I think I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, come over to my house and we'll bang it out. <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, Ben's house was sort of bohemian. Lots of incense holders and dream catchers. Yeah, definitely not the sort of things that I'd pick, but he was a stoner surfer bro dude. Yeah, I don't really believe in things, but I'm totally spiritual. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, maybe all this stuff was just evidence of a more sensitive side to Ben. I asked about some of the knickknacks, just trying to initiate idle conversation and maybe dig past the surface level. I don't know if there is anything past the surface level. <laughs> Uh, this is dense. <laughs> it did work a little bit, though. Uh, he ended up telling me about spending time in India. He seemed to harbor a lot of disdain for the country. Said people were shitting all in the streets, and he couldn't find clean water anywhere. It's like Mexico with a lot more poop and like a few less beheadings. <laughs> What the hell is even that? Uh, why even go to India? 
I don't understand. OP laughed. The line wasn't that funny, but the laugh also kind of served to diffuse some of the tense atmosphere that had been created after endless jabs about everything from the caste system to the dirty street food and everything in between. <laughs> Dude, some of the dirty street food actually looks pretty good, you know? You're in a new land, why not try out a new culture? You wanted to get out of your box, so get the hell out of it. <laughs> uh, uh, so Ben didn't overly focus on the lack of attention from women, but it was mentioned, and I made a mental note. Ben definitely had some entitlement issues, and with all that rage simmering below the surface, it could be an explosive combination. I made a note to mind my P's and Q's and shifted the subject, asking what he had planned for Netflix. Yeah, that good old get out of jail free card only works once, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, he led me to the couch without answering and handed me the remote. I'll leave that up to you. I've got to finish preparing the feast. Oh, feast sounds pretty good. Surely he's not overstating it. He's gonna be like, I made ramen. <laughs> you want me to throw an egg in it? <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, there had been a couple of red flags so far. Yeah, you could say that. But nothing that would make me go screaming into the night. At least, not yet. I hit Surprise Me on Netflix. <laughs> Uh, and Ben came back into the room with a platter covered in fish. Well, there's your surprise again. Another seafood surprise. What the hell is happening? Pair that seafood surprise with the lies we always tell ourselves line that OP has said twice now. And I'm thinking maybe I'm in a coma on a fishing boat in Alaska. I had a tragic accident with a crab trap and now the crew is trying to reach me in my subconscious coma mind. Or maybe it's just a Reddit post. <laughs> uh, so yes, Ben had sardines on that plate even before the seafood surprise from part one. I wasn't really a huge fan of fish. Ben saw the look on my face and presumed that he should explain his dining choices. And I really wish that he hadn't. I try to eat sardines and pineapple almost exclusively because I'm load maxing. He said with a nod. <laughs> uh, dude, he's a gym cell incel. What the hell is this? Uh, what is science done? I'm thrown for a loop right now. <laughs> I thought load maxing was just a weightlifting term. <laughs> and I sort of just nodded right back at him. But my face must have still looked quizzical because he continued. You know how some male porn stars can shoot, like, the biggest loads of jizz? <laughs> I don't even want to know what the f*** I just walked in on. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're right into it, aren't we? I, mean, I guess it's been a while, but I just, I wasn't ready for all this. <laughs> this happened super fast. <laughs> I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Uh, uh, ben continues... I think that's like super hot and I want to be able to do that but like also have it taste good too. Not that I'm gay or anything. I don't eat my own cum like some redacted but <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I just think it's super sexy when a girl is enjoying herself. I'm taking selenium supplements too and it's totally working. <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about, Ben? Uh, uh, I can fill up a whole shot glass now. Before I started load maxing, it was like this sad little poot of semen. But now I'm shooting ropes of the stuff. Oh, I might show you later. If you're lucky. <laughs> uh, he's just trying to live out his head type fantasies. <laughs> What is this, man? Why can't you just do all those things but not mention it, you know? <laughs> and then see if it makes a difference. I don't think you need to explain it to everyone. I never wanted to have this conversation. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, OP continues. I frowned <laughs> and shook my head. But I don't think he even took much notice of that as he went to work obliterating those smelly, 
oily little fishies. I didn't speak up, but like any sane person, I knew at this point that I was wrong about my assessment and it was time to make my escape. There you go, get up, walk out the front door. <laughs> I had a wonderful time, bye. <laughs> However, due to the constraints of the social contract that we've all unwillingly signed, I'd need to bide my time and find the proper strategy. I definitely didn't want to have this jizzed up meathead explode in my face. <laughs> This is my kingdom come. If you'll excuse the pun. <laughs> uh, it's a double entendre, you see. <laughs> you don't just declare war, you know? You prime the press, you square things with the UN, you make up your reasons. I think that's a quote from Peep Show. You prime the press, you square the UN, you make up your reasons. The surprise me movie that I can't remember rolled on and he offered me the fish plate. <laughs> uh, remember what I said about low effort dates? It's just a, a, a plate of sardines. Uh, I opened a can, you want some or not? <laughs> uh, it's even worse than the ramen. I politely declined. My brain was occupied with the perfect exit and hunger is a decent motivator. Yeah, aside from every freaking thing else that's happening. <laughs> when you combine that with the unpredictable meatball that I was seated next to, I should have been launching off that couch like a rocket. Truth be told, I should have just blitzed the front door and not bothered to explain myself. He might get upset, but I would be safe in my car. But then, I wouldn't have this story to share. Please don't put yourself in physical danger in the name of stories, okay? <laughs> I'm never going to advocate that. You probably could have still shared it. It, it would have just been way shorter, you know? <laughs> and, and that's the thing that I said to do in the beginning. You just run. <laughs> it's time to go. Run, bitch! Run! So, eventually, the sardines all went to meet Poo Poo Jesus. <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, tickle time and Poo Poo Jesus watches you? <laughs> uh... Ah, oh, and he leaned back on the couch. He snaked his hand onto my shoulder and pulled me backwards. I wasn't in the mood to cuddle, so I'd scoot away, and then he would inch closer. I hated every second of this awkward little dance, but the strangeness got turned up to 11 when I hit the edge of the couch, and he started running his oily, unwashed fish fingers around my belly button. <laughs> Uh, he's got to be stoned right now or something, dude. <laughs> uh, why wouldn't you wash your hands? This isn't normal behavior, okay? <laughs> uh, I squirmed away from him and stood up. I told him that, yeah, this was all getting to be a little bit too much too soon. But Belly Button Boy wasn't about to let me escape that easily. Oof, where? Where are you going? <laughs> Ben stood up in that same moment and blocked the walkway to the front door. Boy, this is getting really real. <laughs> Maybe pull the pepper spray out? Well, I don't know. California seemingly will prosecute you for anything at all. Can't even kick people in the nuts no more. Babe, that's assault. You're coming with me. You don't understand. He tried to grab my purse. That's my purse! I don't know you! <laughs> So at this point, blocking the door so OP can't exit, Ben asked me to please sit back down, while at the same time guiding me by the shoulders. Guiding is in quotes there. This is creepy, dude. He was far too forceful for my liking. It was a gentle pull into his arm, a gentle push back into the couch, but I mean, this was our first date. I've seen things like this before, between my own parents. This toolbox is one bad argument away from throwing a cinder block at the back of my head. I took a deep breath and used my go-to tactic of avoiding conflict at that time, which was submission. God, that is like a knife to the gut. I hate to see it happen, but you have laid out your reasons. I do like that OP is, is perceptive enough to be like, oh, you're much too physical because from the first day, it's only downhill from there. If he feels like it's okay to do these things on the first meeting, 
That's gross. <laughs> OP says, as I sat back down onto the couch, he dropped to his knees. Oh no. I was expecting the worst to happen, but instead he started to baby talk me, which is still pretty fucking bad. <laughs> I thought he was gonna use his mouth. His fish hole kissing your fish hole, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, oh, should have phrased it that way. And then we got the baby talk, which is just gonna be awful too, I think. I think I am gonna shift him to the beard voice now. I don't wanna taint the surfer dude voice with all this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, does little Donnie want to see baby Ben's tug? Uh, I can wick your widow belly button. <laughs> Ugh, keep your fetish away from me. Uh, that sounds awful. <laughs> then maybe you could go play with something else. My world is about to explode. <laughs> There goes my spine. Just rocketing through the roof. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this has been so bad. The load maxing was bad, but the baby talk is worse, man. <laughs> uh, my woad is about to explode. Uh, like Elmer Fudd, dude. Uh, I still wonder if he meant for that to rhyme. <laughs> It was effective, in a way. I still remember those words many years later. The thousand yard stare that I had adopted as my defense started to gaze through time and space, trying to find any reality that wasn't this one. Just because my body was stuck there didn't mean that my brain had to be, so I disconnected as much as possible. But even Terry Shavo would take notice of the horrors that would befall me next. Come on, man, please, please don't do this, okay? Don't let no bad happen. I really hope that this doesn't end in the worst way. I might not publish the episode. I guess we'll have to read on and see. I suppose Baby Ben, the belly button bully boy, <laughs> took my silence and disaffected staring at the ceiling as consent. <laughs> God. Uh, this has killed me in so many ways because he lifted my shirt enough to expose my belly button. The first thing he did was give it a really deep sniff before letting out a satisfied, Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, was he looking for a good scent? A bad one? Was he just that excited to unveil the mysterious allure of a teenage navel? <laughs> The debate rages on to this very day. It doesn't really matter much because he didn't stop at smelling it. Oh boy, he's gonna make a new fish hole, isn't he? <laughs> uh, this isn't gonna turn out great. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Uh, his tongue slipped into that umbilical scar and started to explore. Ugh, <laughs> brand new sentence for sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, I never wanted this. Me either, OP. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry this happened. This is assault. It seems silly and ridiculous in hindsight, but it's also like mind-blowingly terrifying. How did you ever get back on Tinder after all this? <sighs> OP continues, I didn't consent at any point, but I didn't outright say no either. I've unpacked this experience with multiple therapists. I think what I remember most vividly was looking down and seeing his wet, oily fish lips. They were sucking on my stomach like my navel was the last source of oxygen on the planet. I recall seeing his tongue covered in desiccated and masticated remains of that sardine meal, fishing around for whatever the hell it was that he wanted. <laughs> God, uh, all he wants is to coom, and so you have to be subjected to these horrors because he can't just act like a normal goddamn human being. Oh, oh. Uh, he kept muttering to himself, oh no, between spelunking expeditions, weird shit like, 
Oh, baby, wipe your belly. And Baba make Betty's pee pee so hard. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I, I hate everything about this. <laughs> the cringe meter <laughs> was redlining. <laughs> uh, we are there. This is unprecedented. Breaking new ground, trace amounts of science. Oh, and I hate it. <laughs> I finally realized that Ben wasn't going to stop unless I made him stop. I told him that uh, I had to pee and that he should please drink some water. I was hoping it might wash away some of the sardine leftovers if I really did need to come back. At this point, my plan was to bail out the bathroom window. <laughs> Uh, it is legit, dude. You think it only happens in movies? Nah, -uh. real life crazy too. <laughs> that was until I got into the bathroom and I saw that the window was only about six inches tall. Don't. <laughs> Just enough to air out some sardine and selenium laden ploppers. <laughs> uh, sardine poop, nasty. But it wasn't enough to do me any good. I must have stood in that bathroom for 20 minutes or so. There was no escape. If I wanted out, I would need to go through. Just as a reminder from the universe about that fact, every once in a while, I'd hear Ben let out a large belch. <sighs> At least he was washing his fishy mouth out. I steeled myself and headed back into the living room. I lied that I had a text from my mom and I really had to leave, but Ben wrapped his arms around me and begged to finish our date. Again, pretty sure this qualifies as assault too. <laughs> Unwanted hug to keep me from leaving. It's not a hug at that point. <laughs> uh, OP says, I could clearly smell beer on Ben's breath. Natty Ice, whoa. Memories of dear old dad must have kicked in because I found myself agreeing to sit on the couch again. Jesus, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? I don't know that I'm fully prepared for that today. But it's okay, OP, third time's the charm, right? You will yet escape his clutches! Ben continued rubbing his stale, beer-smelling mouth all over my stomach, except this time, there was the added benefit of pauses to burp every so often. <laughs> is it that so funny? Does it that sound like an echo, Mama? Mama? Oh, no! <laughs> uh, my skin is crawling off! Uh, I truly did want to die in that moment. I think I speak for everybody here when we say, Us too, OP. <laughs> uh, I had to find some way to at least pump the brakes, if not just bail out completely. I squirmed away from him, again. I told him that this was moving too fast, again. He didn't ignore me this time. So I suggested that we watch a new movie. This time I chose a Chucky movie. Either he would get scared and give me an out, or I would pretend to be scared and make the exit for myself. Or he'd just agree to switch the movie if you're scared. I gotta be real, OP, this plan's flimsy as hell. <laughs> uh, if I knew how Ben would actually react to that Chucky movie, I might not have taken this measure. The moment the movie started, Ben was immobilized. He had stopped trying to molest my belly button. All he did was apply a nervous death grip to the arm of the sofa. I asked if he was okay, and he insisted he was fine. <laughs> He was not fine, however, and after the first on-screen murder, I looked over to see tears rolling down his cheeks. Oh, maybe there is some semblance of a human being in there. I kind of feel bad for him now too, but not really. This was a do-or-die situation, wasn't it? He wasn't outright, but yeah, he's definitely being pretty gross. <laughs> this is not chivalrous or nice. It's forceful and aggressive and weird. OP decides that this is her moment. It was either act like a cold hard bitch or continue being assaulted. I asked incredulously, are you crying? He nodded and started his whining baby talk, but he didn't follow me as I leapt from the couch. I called him a sissy 
and flung the front door open. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, I really hope Ben didn't take some drastic measures after this, you know? <laughs> he laid himself bare. I'm sort of conflicted still, but OP has explained quite clearly that this was going in a bad way. I don't know if you needed to insult him, though. <laughs> uh, I quickly walked to my car. My brain had second thoughts, but I turned the key in the engine. I legitimately wanted things to work with Ben. I would have been mommy, whatever. <laughs> but he didn't ask for consent at any point and was overly pushy about everything that he wanted. Yeah, okay, Ben's still a bad guy. <laughs> I felt bad for him for a moment, but yeah. You reap what you sow, don't you? Well, I do feel bad about doing that to Ben and piling an unneeded insult on top of it. Oh, you admitted to it, that's good. <laughs> I felt much more delight than despair in that moment. The situation was headed for a place that I didn't want it to go, and I was able to scratch and claw my way back to freedom. It is some poetic justice, isn't it? The belly button boy had unveiled his Achilles heel as a silly talking point, and I thank my lucky stars that I was able to use that to my advantage. He could have flown into a rage over it, but he didn't. Yeah, like I said, this plan was super flimsy. <laughs> uh, the guardian angel on my shoulder was working overtime on that day. I have no doubts about that. Looking back, should I have called the cops and reported him? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Instead, I just thanked my lucky stars and tried to move past it in my own way. Would the cops even have filed a report for that? I, I like to think that they would, right? Worst case scenario, they come and extract you from the bathroom <laughs> and, and send you on your way home. But it is quite lucky that you were able to do it without any outside help. And so you would think that this would be the end of the tale. But there was a follow-up to the bad date. Remember when I mentioned that Ben was close to his mother? Yeah, maybe too close looking back. This is really weird. <laughs> Well, she charged into battle in defense of her little belly button man. I answered the first time she called. Whew, I wouldn't make that mistake again. <laughs> she accused me of abusing her special boy. She threatened me with everything from death to lawsuits. She slung every curse under the sun at me. After five minutes, I realized that I was trying to talk sense into a lunatic and blocked her number. <laughs> uh, you gotta know when to fold them, that's true enough. Belly button matriarch wasn't done with me yet though. I would get sporadic VOIP calls for weeks afterwards. She contacted my job to report me. <laughs> report you for what? Uh, she attempted to harass my mom and every other contact she could find. Yeah, I suppose that's the unfortunate part of social media. Damn, preach. <laughs> I explained to everyone what had happened, and they all agreed that, yeah, she was completely unhinged. Luckily, it seemed like her harassment was completely confined to the internet. I went dark for a month, and I guess she found a new target. Ben wouldn't have trouble getting any more dates, even if he was a certified navel-gazer. <laughs> uh, he wants to do more than just gaze. Maybe Ben should just put that into his bio, you know? I like belly buttons. And then <laughs> people who think it's a joke, you sort them out. Some percentage will be willing to at least put up with it, if not even enjoy it on some level. You just gotta be real. You just gotta be honest. So it was at this point that I swore off of Tinder for the first time. This wouldn't stop me from meeting up with maniacs, though. My therapist says that I demonstrate a concerning amount of thrill-seeking behavior. <laughs> Don't do that. And that these encounters are a manifestation of that. While I don't agree 100%, I still think I overanalyze and avoid uncertainty in a lot of other areas of my life. Maybe the comments could let me know how they feel about that diagnosis. You're definitely careful when you're engaging in risky behavior, but it, <laughs> it is risky behavior. What do you want me to say? Your therapist sounds like a real one, okay? <laughs> also, speaking of therapy, in hindsight, I can absolutely see how that insane woman could have produced a self-absorbed, baby-talking dunderhead. <laughs> dunderhead? Uh, what are you, from the 50s? Gonna take a gal down to the malt shop? Ha! Huh? 
Hi, cauliflower is here. Bully! <laughs> uh, if you look at it through that frame, then the tale of Ben the Belly Button Boy takes on a much more depressing tone. He's kind of like a modern day Frankenstein, but he still does bear some responsibility for his actions. At least that's what I tell myself when I start feeling guilty. That is completely fair, honestly. <laughs> Just because his mother was the genesis of this doesn't mean that he's incapable of breaking the cycle. Maybe he does at some point in his life. I don't know, I feel a lot of different ways about this, but it is much more fun to just point and laugh and be like, ha ha, belly button boy. <laughs> uh, so OP says I did manage to stay off Tinder for a while, but in our next installment, we're headed to Craigslist for a real treat. Dude, Craigslist? <laughs> Come on, man. It's like you're trying to get axe murdered. Be afraid. I am. <laughs> Those are tales for another day, though. Thanks to Red X if he reads this. Please subscribe to him on YouTube if you haven't. Heck yeah. And I will see you again next time, my little tinderlings. Signed, Don. TLDR. Lunatic Lugnut baby talks my belly button with his fish lips. <laughs> that does about sum it up, doesn't it? I really do feel bad for Ben in a few types of ways, but also, like I said, it, it really is up to him to break this cycle. At least learn how to function like a normal human being, but I don't know. They're all relatively young, aren't they? Young people are prone to make some stupid decisions, aren't they? God, I know I did. <laughs> But uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode, friends. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. Exceedingly important. It tells the algorithm that yes, this has pleased the viewer. And that's like the most important metric these days for reals. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on social medias, TikTok, Twitter, Discord. Thank you uh, to my Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members as well. You can also tip the video with the super thanks. One of your dollars is like three, four of mine. Go ahead and extrapolate that, right? <laughs> Even if you can't donate, that's cool. I just appreciate you coming on through. I hope you'll come on back, see what we're cooking up for tomorrow. In order to join us again, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. And of course, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. Thank you.